talking about that yacht race overall. Uh, on my left, Matt Allen, the owner skipper of the brand new 60 foot car keep called Fishy Barn. Next to him, Tony Kirby, who has the Airport 6 Port Patrice, also brand new and been going like a rocket ship in races, already frightening people. Uh, next to him, yes, Kelly Carlson from Germany, who has the Yacht Karuna and Care 51, that's also uh, produced some good results. Next to him, Roger Hickman from the uh, probably one of the older boats in the fleet, uh, Wild Rose. Roger has won the race overall before in 1993 with Wild Rose that used to originally be uh, Wild Oats. And next to him we have um, Jim Gallagher, the owner of Shikamo, all the way from New Zealand. Um, he now owns the winner of the latest Volvo Ocean Race, uh, which was known as Group Harbour 4. So, Matt's boat was only launched late November and um, it's probably only done, was it one, one race? Oh, about five races. Five yeah. races. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a bit about your new boat, the thinking behind it and uh, how you're going with it? Well, uh, we, we designed uh, a 60-footer because we thought that this race favours the boats that really get in on the, in the afternoon and on the average race, a 60-footer will get in sort of sometime between mid-morning and mid-afternoon and hopefully uh, avoid the treacheries of the light airs and in the Derwent and uh, in Storm Bay. So uh, our feeling was to go for a fixed keel yacht, relatively proven technology, but to try and increase the performance of very successful boats, um, especially uh, boats like Loki that got the second last year and won overall the year before. So it's a really development of that theme. Matt, your crew, you've got a, a, a crew, a mix of your usual um, good people on your boat and also mixed in with some of the crew from Loki that won the race overall two years ago and finished second overall. So how important are crew? Oh, look, vitally important, especially I think when the boat's relatively new, you need to get it up to uh, speed very quickly. We've got a lot of experience on board, including um, a number of the guys from the last Volvo Ocean Race, including uh, Will Oxley. Uh, who navigated Camper. We've got uh, Gordon McGuire, who's obviously sailing master, who's done a lot of Volvo Ocean races. Um, Neil Cox from Camper, and also Phil Harmer, who was on uh, Group Armour that won the race. So a lot of experience, including um, a lot of senior to Hobart experience. Okay, Tony, you have to be pretty happy with your boat. I mean, you literally launched it one day and were racing it the next. You've already won the um, Sydney Short Offshore Championship finished up on the podium in the other races you've done. Yes, I'm very happy for this story. Uh, the boat's going well. Uh, beyond my expectations, it's, it's one thing to put a new boat in the water, but then to get results uh, pretty much straight away in all the races we've done so far is really exciting. And you've pulled together some old sailing from our sort of generation, I believe, Mike Green that's done coming up for his uh, 35th to equal his father's record. Yes, yeah, I've got a good mixture of old and new. Uh, I've actually had quite a, a few young crew who are doing their uh, third, fourth and sort of fifth Hobart races. Uh, but then my old crew uh, had Michael Green, who actually did his first city to Hobart some 35 years ago on my father's first fleet, uh, to Peter Messenger uh, but, and Richard Grimes, my navigator. But behind our crew, we're, I think we're close to 200 Hobart races between us. And how does Greg feel about equaling his father's record on, on your boat? That um, you know, having his father having sailed with your father, and the two of them having sailed with your father. Well, he said he's uh, going. To, he'd like to retire matching his father's record, and it'll be quite fitting to get his first race on the trace to do his last race on the trace. But I have a funny feeling it won't be his last. And um, we've also got there Peter Messenger, who who will back up his uh, milestone twenty fifth. Yes, well, Peter's this is a sunny year for him. He hasn't done the Hobart race every year, like that, but uh, he's got a, quite a good record. Uh, he's sailed on four Hobart winners, and, and there have been four different boats, and he'd like to make it five Hobart winners uh, out of 25 races. And then you've got Gail Harland, uh, one of the females, who uh, isn't about as close to the, as the female record as you can get. Yes, uh, Gail's a, a great girl to have on board. She's sailed about 10 or 15 Hobart races with me on other boats as well. And uh, she's 
uh, one of my Saudi buddies. She puts in like anybody else puts in on the boat. And I think she's doing, she's doing her 19th Hobart race this year, and she's two behind Avery for the second, being the second highest woman in the race. And um, so is your boat fully prepared now, or are you still doing bits and pieces too? It's still tinkering, or? Uh, tinkering, yes. Well, wish it was for that, but uh, by the end of, uh, by lunchtime tomorrow, we'll be all race ready. And it's uh, by my boxing day. Now, yet, um, you're a bit of an unknown quantity with our race. You haven't <coughs> bought your boat here before, and I believe you have some interesting people aboard, including a world class navigator. Fill us in a bit on that. Uh, it should be a cool amateur. We started five years ago, watch us 46. And we got this care 51 bid early last year, and I think it's since then. And yeah, there's many amateurs, but yeah, many amateurs being a fashion navigator for this race. So we want to make sure whether we can handle it ourselves. And we have a professional trimmer and cross the board captain. So those are our young people who are studying or who are doctor right now. So it's a young crew and they're very keen to sell here because it's, it's yeah, the top of the career. You can sell it in Germany and uh, it's more to the net. This year we have started in the Caribbean, Caribbean 600 and St. Wilds. We are selling transfer from LA to Honolulu. So we shipped the boat from LA to, to Sydney. And why, why did you decide to do the Rolex Sydney Hobart? Oh, it's one of the top events of the world and it was on our dream list all the time. We would have come last year and the boat and the crew were ready to get at that time. So we are looking forward to doing this year. So how many sea miles do you think you've um, got behind you with this boat now? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Too many lots. Too many lots, yeah. Yes. So you're, you're race ready, ready for it? We should be ready. And Roger, a bit of pressure there, leading the cruising off on the stairs, blue water point score, with just the Rolex and the Coda to go, and the boat, despite her age, um, is just going like a champ, putting a few of the other boats to shame. Uh, and, I mean, you've come close a few times to the Rolex. You've over races. He seems to be on here. Yes? Well, thanks, Di. I have, have it on very, very good authority from Michael Clark, Captain Australian Cricket Team, that you can win and take wickets with the old ball just as well as with the new ball. So I guess with that philosophy, the old girl, the old boat, um, there is an opportunity, it's a small opportunity, it's a long odds opportunity, but uh, we have done well and there is a slim chance that we could, um, could win the Rolex City to Hobart this year. And um, so explain to us the, the age you go and the difference between your boat and a lot of these new boats. Well I think that the fundamental difference is that the new boats go fast and we go slow. But you know, the stories about the hare and the tortoise and all that sort of thing. So we plod along and um, the handicap allows us a lot more time. Because the boat's older and fatter and slower with a smaller sail plan, the uh, handicap, which the overall winner of the race um, is, allows us a fair bit more time. As an example, Wild Oaks 11, our sister ship, um, they have to get there in a day, we can take two days. If they take two days, we can take four days. So the weather comes and goes in that time. But uh, there is an opportunity for every boat. Um, and as Matt and Alan pointed out, the bands, you've got your 60 foot band, your 50 foot band, and your 40 foot band. Well, in our group, we've got some tough competition. Um, Chris Brand has a, a boat called Brand New, very well sailed and a tough competitor. So, in order for us to do well this year, firstly, we have to get there, and that's the first and most important thing everybody just loves getting to Hobart. The second thing is you have to win your division. And then the third thing, and probably the most prized, is to win the overall Patterson's Trophy. Okay, thanks. Now, Jim, um, I know that you've sailed on Bow Jess with Carl Pock. I know you've done a bit of sailing there. I've not known you as a boat owner before, and all of a sudden I think this New Zealand winery owner has gone out and bought the free car before and decided to bring it over to the Royal Lake City Hobart and renamed it Shukamo. Tell us a bit about how this came about and what plans you have for both, why you're here, that sort of thing. Yeah, well thank you Guy and good morning. 
Well, you know, like all of us, so many of us here, you know, ocean racing is a personal sporting, you know, ambition of mine. And, um, you know, I've been on and off boats for 25 years. And, um, you know, the, the whole concept of uh, mounting a campaign of my own has been a, a long held ambition, as I say. So, you know, when Group Palmer 4 came along and uh, the opportunity was there, it seemed too good to, to resist. Um, and there are a number of factors why it's, it, was, uh, it was a great boat for me, because uh, it was proven. Um, and of course, you know, since then we've taken it away from the Volvo rules and it's IRC. We've got a very good handicap rating, got a great sail plan, and um, you know, it's performed really reasonably well to date. Um, you know, we did in New Zealand the Coastal Classic and, and knocked that out in good speed, in you know, in variable conditions. So upwind, downwind, you know, um, it, it's it's good all round. Um, it's it's a real flyer at the start, uh, as we've demonstrated a couple of weeks ago here, um, and that's 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 impressive for us. But I, I think in many ways I put that down to you know the crew. Uh, you know, we've got a fantastic crew. I've got a great afterguard. Uh, Juan Veal from Spain is coming out today um, as our navigator. You know, you'll remember him from the Alingi days. Uh, he's done four Hobarts before, so we think he'll bring a lot to the table. Um, Steve Cotton, um, this is an experienced um, number of Volvos. I think Steve's done about three. He was uh, chief helmsman and tactician on Living Doll for about five Hobarts, so we've been fortunate to have Steve come across. Um, and um, Chris Dixon, of course, we'll have uh, Chris all well known to you. Um, he'll be on the helm um, and uh, we'll be expecting to see good results from, from Chris in that area there. So all in all, we think we've got a great package that will give us a lot of excitement. But I suspect on the day, it'll be on the day. And um, we'll rely, I guess, on the, uh, on the handicap ratings, which we've got, you know, quite favourable ratings. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing Blackjack out there with, and, and Ishiban and, you know, we'll kind of mix it with a few like boats. So I think this is going to be one of the great exciting moments in my yachting life anyway. And, um, you know, to cap it off, we're the only New Zealand entry. So um, I guess that those uh, four stars of the Southern Cross will uh, mean a lot more for us. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thanks. So, Matt, you know that um, the weather Tasman Island and last time I had those conditions we won the race so um, we're, we're hoping for that again. Um, I think with the weather the models really aren't in line at this stage so it's probably going to move around a little bit but certainly the boats that are still haven't gone around uh, Tasman Island you know, on uh, Sunday are going to struggle. Um, 30 to 40 knots, maybe more um, from the south, southwest is going to push the smaller boats back in my view. So it's pretty hard to work out who's going to win the race, but I think you're probably looking at sort of the middle to largest section of the boats, probably with the best chance. As Hiko says, you've got to win your division to have any chance of winning the race, but I think the, I think the people who, who will be in that sort of mid to upper ranges will have the best chance of winning the race overall, given the weather. Okay. So Roger, um, last year you guys were in Division 4, and both of you beat all of the Division 2 and 3 boats overall, uh, despite some sort of muggy weather towards the end. What would be ideal for you and what are your aims for, for this race? Well, I guess you really need a lot of lady luck. Uh, luck, as Matt was saying, the weather comes and goes and it changes quite regularly. But for us, uh, it is what it is. Um, because we're a smaller boat, we're at the end. It's not that we get the dregs of the weather, but we just get what the weather turns out. Sometimes it's been favourable over the years, in the last 70 years, um, smaller boats have what they've done, blown home. The weather at the moment's not looking like that, 
But there is a lot of East Coast current running this year, so that helps us because we're slow and the current's strong. Um, that really does give you a leg up. If you're fast and the current's strong, it's a much smaller percentage of your speed. So uh, I'd hazard a guess that for the first day, day and a half, we might be doing well. <laughs> and then we'll just see. But the 30 knots that uh, Matt was talking about, um, the old girl, the wild rose, goes nearly as fast upwind as it does downwind. So we don't really mind whether which side of the, um, which direction the wind comes from. Would you all agree that this would be one of the hardest fleets in some years, one of the most colourful, one of the hardest ones to even look at who might score online and overall? What's everyone's feelings? Well, I, I think it's very hard to pick a winner. I, I don't think there's any race in the world that you go to to see such an eclectic collection of boats. A lot of them, you know, such as you know, Bow Jest, um, to some degree, you know, Patrice and Ichiban are almost unproven boats. Um, and I know TK's been winning a lot of races recently, and, um, but you know, we haven't seen the Bow Jest race. So there's lots of unknown commodities out there, so it's very hard to pick a winner. Gavin Brady, I spoke to him last night, they arrived with Bo Jest and he laid the gauntlet down and he's made it quite clear that um, they were in full race mode coming over. Uh, he pointed out the boat was full of Hooksons and um, he said they didn't muck around, they had uh, spots in the Tasman where there were no wind shifts and they went and practised windward lewards on their way here. They uh, got so concentrated on everything, they practised sail changes, reefs, um, he said as far as going down to putting in their minds how everyone can pick up some tea, he's laid it down and he said, you know, we're here, we're serious and people can say what they like, but he reckons they're up and ready to uh, go for line. Honours and an overall win and uh, the boat's in great shape, they'll be a throw He said the worst thing that happened on their trip was that they hit a sunfish 20 minutes in and uh, that the sunfish, sunfish came off the worst for wear. And, um, so how do you guys feel about well, guy, I think that? I think win, lose or draw, this uh, race to Hobart is a great race. We love it. It's the Everest of yacht racing. And so I, I commend Gavin on all his hopes. But it's just a great race, a great event. And there's 80, 80 90, 100 boats. We'll all enjoy the event. There'll only be one winner and we'll all congratulate that winner. Um, but we're there, and I'm sure everybody at this table is there, just to experience the event first and foremost, and then um, you know, take the spoils of victory to get there. Okay. So, Jim, does that become a bit of a challenge for you then? Up again, not a Kiwi boat, but a lot of Kiwi sailors on yeah. board. Yeah. Well, you know, it is an exciting event, it's been said, you know, there's unquestionably. You know, for our part, I don't think we're going to be too good on the 14, 16, 18 knots. You know, I think we've got to have it at the top end. If we can have a bit of a drag race because uh, the 100 footers will get away with us, you know, on us on the 14, 15 knots. So um, I think the kind of boat that we've got is we want the, you know, pretty stiff breezes. Um, but all in all, you know, it's, it's, um, you sail the race tactically, I'm told, you know, um, you get everything at the Ho Sunita Hobart. So, you know, we've really got to be on our game. If we can knock it out in the late 40s, you know, 40, 40, 48 hours or something like that, I doubt that there'll be much sleep on the boat. I think that it'll be a non-stop shift, which will make it pretty exciting as well. But um, I, I think it is. It is what it is, and it'll be what it is, and it'll be, and um, we'll congratulate the winner at the end of the day. And yes, we haven't seen a German name on the Tavis's Cup over there since the 90s. <laughs> Rap Tour. Yeah. How good would it be for you to see your name engraved on that trophy and to have a Rolex Time Master. Oh, that would be fantastic. We're not even dreaming of it. Yeah. It's the first time here, uh, just participating. It's all we're in for. Okay, Tony, tried a few yeah. times to win this race and come close. Yes, I can certainly do that. Well, to me, the Hobart race is the pinnacle of uh, yacht racing, ocean yacht racing. Uh, there's many other classics as well, the fast band with the new hot computer. Uh, that's one of the great reasons I'd like to compete in the races. I can actually compete against some of the best boats in the world that all come to do it as well. Uh, the Germans and, and the great yachts for New Zealand. Uh, gives us the ability to show off our know, great Australian talents as well. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, Jim, you said 
Matt, you've, you've had a pretty tight timeline getting ready. Where, where are you compared to, to where you want to be? I think for um, sailing to Hobart, we're, we're fine. Um, I think if we're about to go into a sort of a, a, a series of windward lured races, we would be probably not quite at 100%. So uh, we're pretty confident we can push the boat. We've got a lot of people who are used to pushing, you know, 60 footers and Volvo 70s um, hard and, um, and consistently, and we're we're comfortable with you know the structure of the boat and all the equipment. So. Uh, we we'll would probably need to do a little bit more waterproofing, so but we've got some good pumps on board. If we, uh, you know, if we hit that sort of 30 to 40 knots on the nose, you know, the boys there's going to be one or two boys down below, you know, mopping up the bilge, but um, that's part of the part of the sport as well. Anyone else? Yes, can I ask? There's obviously a large number of overseas boats this year. Well, why, why do you think that is? I mean, there's a very large number of overseas boats this year. Why, why do you think that is? What, what attracts these boats to this race? To be came here. Oh, and, and, a, and a number of other overseas boats to the obvious. Yeah, just a, as a sailing boat, it's one of the events to go. So, and you're very lucky when you can make it. Yeah. Jim, can I ask, how do you think you're going to go against the likes of Hobart and Sydney? Because they're both very Telefonica and Group Palmer had something incredible face-offs in the Volvo around the world. They've had Blackjack for a lot longer than you've had Giacomo. Do you think you're going to be up there with them? Do you think you're capable of beating them like Group Palmer did beat Telefonica? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question. We think about that quite a bit, don't we? <laughs> but they've got a kind of a different sail plan. Um, I'm very impressed with their um, with their powered winch system. You know, that, uh, that's really an advantage for them, but maybe not so much on an ocean race that we're heading into now. Um, I, I think that they're going to do really well. I mean, to say they led in the, in the Volvo race, didn't they? And I think it was more where the team fell apart and the French got better rather than the boat not, not being there. So, uh, and they're both one K boats and one was out here the other day. And we talked a lot about that. And I don't think there'll be much difference. I, I'm really looking forward to us racing closely and having a lot of fun. Um, you know, maybe we wouldn't buy canvas. <laughs> what kind of a win do we need to see for the Volvos to get up there and play? So, sorry? What kind of a win do we need to see to see the Volvos up there with the Wild Oaks and the 100 points? Oh, you know, I, I, I think those big boats are fast anyway, you know, in any kind of breeze. Um, you know, I think more wind, more power, you know, it's, it's where it's coming from really, you know, if it's a good reach. Um, but they just they just sail away. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. And we we lose or draw Jim. Will be coming back next year for our seventieth anniversary race? <coughs> well, if I'm still here, I'd love to. Yeah, it's looking very good. I've been very well received. It's been very pleasant here, Rush Bay. Yes. If you're going to be anywhere in the world at this time of the year, Sydney Harbour's a great place to be, isn't it? You know, people are very nice to me. Thank you. <laughs> Roger, what's, what's the flip side of that? How do the Australian skippers feel about the international influx this year? Oh, look, it's magnificent. It's just magnificent. We love the race. As Kirby said, we're locals. We love it. We get to compete against some of the best in the world and the, certainly the best locally. But uh, to get boats from overseas, it it's just adds another dimension to the race. New competition, new faces, and um, it spreads the good word, I think. But, uh, yeah, it's a real privilege to have them all here. Provided they don't win, of course. Surprise. Provided they don't win, of course. Yeah, no, I think, it, well, it's be good for them to win. You know, we don't want to keep well, it like... one every 20 years. Yeah, one every 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they say the more effort you put in, the results may come. So the people that have... Uh, there's so many of us that have done 20 or 30 of these races and you might just win one, luckily. Uh, for someone to just waltz in and take the prize... Uh, is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> but we certainly wish them all the luck in the world. We'll make it hard for them. <laughs> yes. So do you have any advice for them? Have any advice? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, enjoy the running. It's lovely. Enjoy the rain and the lightning. But when that southerly comes, you've got to enjoy that too because uh, there's very rarely a Rolex City to Hobart without the southerly buster, without the cold, the wet. Um, and um, if you can enjoy the running, you've got to enjoy the on the wind. I just, I just missed actually how old Wilder Rose is. 
you never ask an old lady how much she pays <laughs> or how old she is. Um, Bob Oatley commissioned to have the boat built in 1983. It was launched in 1985. <clears throat> so I don't know whether that makes us a vintage or a veteran, but um, uh, yeah. So that, I don't know the sums. 1985. It's a fine wine. Someone actually wrote to me the other day and they said that wild rose is like a grange. The older it gets, the better it gets, and the more value it is, the more value it has. The older it gets, the better it gets, but the value I don't think so. 